in Azure Databricks, Autoloader is a scalable data integration feature that automatically loads new files from cloud storage like the ADLS Gen 2 into a Delta Lake table, enabling efficient incremental data processing. As data engineers, it is important to be skilled in implementing this kind of solution for your organization. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to professionally implement incremental data loading from the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 to Azure Databricks. And then we're going to use the data to report in the Power BI desktop. So let's get started. I'm going to encourage you to please subscribe to this channel if you are yet to do that. And then turn on the bell icon to be informed of new videos. Let's go through the project. To achieve this solution, we're going to go through these 10 major steps. First, we're going to see how we can create an hierarchical namespace enabled storage account, which is the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. And then we're going to create a container within the ADLA storage account and then create a directory within the container. For the step number two, we're going to register an app in the Entra ID, which is known as the Azure Active Directory in the past. And this is going to serve as the service principal for authenticating the Azure Databricks to access the ADLS Gen 2 container. For the step number three, we're going to get the client ID, tenant ID, and then generate the client secrets of the registered app in the step number two. And then for the step number four, we're going to grant permissions on the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 using the app registered in the step number two by assigning storage block data contributor in the role based access control, that is the IAM. For the number five, we're going to create Azure Databricks workspace and cluster with a single node. For the number six, we're going to create new notebook and implement the incremental data loading with the necessary code, which I'm going to show you later. Number seven, after the setup, we're going to add sales 2015 and 2016 CSV files from my local laptop to the container directory. And then for the number eight, we're going to go to the Databricks notebook to investigate the real-time streaming of the new files and query the data. And then for the number nine, we're going to add more data and query it again in the notebook. And then for the step number 10, we're going to create a view in the Databricks notebook for Power BI to connect to perform some data transformation and then create a report. So let's go through all of these steps. Before we start building anything in the Azure portal, it is important to take a look at the sample data and the files. I'm going to come to this CSV file. In this CSV, I've got these several columns such as the order date, year, month, region, subcategory, product, price, quantity, and sales. And this is for sales2015.csv. I'm going to come to this folder. In this folder, I've got the 2015 to 2025 sales csv files so we want to go ahead and create the azure data lake story gentle in the azure portal the container and the directory so i'm going to come back to this portal and i can search for the storage account now if you need to see the storage you can come to the search menu and type in storage account and then click on it and we're going to go ahead and create a new adls gentle storage account so i'm going to click on this create in the create a storage account menu we can see under the basic tabs we can provide the subscription and the resource group so i'm going to be using my visual studio enterprise subscription and it's going to be housed in the cornerstone it solutions resource group next we're going to provide a name for the storage account i'm going to call this one databricks storage account the name is globally available i'm going to go ahead and choose the region so i can click on this I'm going to actually create this in the East US region. So I can scroll up and set for the East US region. And then we can specify the primary service, but this is not required. So I'm going to come to the advanced tab in the advanced tab because we want to create an hierarchical namespace enabled storage account, which is going to be the Azure Data Lake Storage Tool. I'm going to scroll down and then I'm going to click on the enable hierarchical namespace. And I can click on the review plus create. And this is going to start validating the information and then I can click on create. This has been submitted for deployment. So we're going to wait for some couple of minutes and then proceed to the next stage, which is to create the container and the directory within the container. The storage account has been created successfully. I'm going to click on go to resource and we can see Databricks storage account we want to go ahead and create our container under the data storage so on the left hand panel click on this to expand and then click on containers we want to create a brand new container 
and you can give this a name. I'm going to call this one Databricks Container. And then at the bottom, I'm going to click on Create. The Databricks Container has been created successfully. I'm going to click on that and it will create the directory within the container. So click on Add Directory. I'm going to call this one Transactions. And then at the bottom, I'm going to click on Save. So this is the completion of the step number one. For the number two, we will go ahead and register an application in the entry ID, which we're going to use to authenticate the Azure Databricks to access the ADLS Gen 2. Now, I'm going to leave this open as it is and use this tab. So when I come to this tab, I can in the search menu search for the entry ID. This is known as the Azure Active Directory in the past. Click on the entry ID. I'm going to click on this add and then I can say app registration and I can give this a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one Databricks app registration. And then for the, we can use this application or access this API. So it's going to be accounts in this organizational directory only within this single tenant. So I can click on register at the bottom. Okay. So the Databricks app registration is successful. So we're going to go to the step number three, which is to get a client ID, the tenant ID, client secrets of the registered app. So essentially in the overview, we can see the client ID here. And then I can see the tenant ID. So we're going to go on later on to create the secret. So we can always do that by coming to the manage and then we have the certificate and secret. So I'm going to click on that. And then we can see we can generate a new secret. So click on this. I'm going to call this one my secret. And then it's going to expire in 180 days in six months. So click on add. And then we have the description and then we have the expiry date and this is the secret ID that we need. And this is just a value. So this is the secret key and this is the ID. So we want to go to step number four, which is to grant permission to the Azure Data List Storage Gen 2 using the app will register to access the ADLS Gen 2 as a storage blob data contributor. To do that, I'm going to come back to the storage account here. So let me just return back here. So I'm going to set for that Databricks storage account. Now I'm going to click on the access control. This is the role based access control, the IAM. Click on that. And in the IAM, I want to add a role assignment. So I'm going to click on the add and then add role assignments. And then under the job function roles tab of this role, I'm going to set for the storage block data contributor. So we have this here. So this is going to allow me to read, write, and delete access to the Azure storage blob container and data. So make sure this is selected and then click on next. And then under this member staff, we can see the selected role, which is the storage blob data contributor. And then we have the assign access to user group or service principal. So we want to assign it to the service principal that's created the app. And then we can assign the member. So I'm going to select the member by clicking on this. And then don't forget the name of our app, which is Databricks App Registration. I can just copy this momentarily and then come back here. And in this box, I'm going to control V to paste. So this is going to automatically pops up Databricks App Registration within the ADLS Gen 2 IAM. That is the role based access control. Click on that and it's going to be selected and I can click on select. And then we can see this is populated here. We have the name of the app, the service principle, and then we have the object ID and then the type. And I can even delete if we want to do that. So I'm going to click on review plus create added role assignment. So this has been added or granted in the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 storage account. So this is the end of step number four. Step number five, we will go ahead and create our Azure Data Breaks workspace and cluster with a single node. So I'm going to just leave these two tabs. I'm going to come to this next tab and then I can see the Azure Databricks and I can even search in this menu if I couldn't see it in the front side I can search for Azure Databricks and then I can create a new workspace. So click on this create Azure Databricks service and then we're going to provide the subscription which is going to be the same virtual studio enterprise. I'm going to choose the same resource group Cornerstone IT Solutions and then I'm going to call this a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one Databricks, or let me just call it my Databricks workspace. And then I'm going to choose the region again. I'm going to choose the same US East. So I'm going to scroll up and choose that. And then for the pricing tier, we have the premium, which is 
which also include the rule-based access control, and then we have the free trial in the 14 days, and then we have the standard Apache Spark secure with Microsoft Entry ID. I'm going to go with this premium, and I can click on Review plus Create. The deployment took approximately five minutes. So I'm going to click on Go to Resource. And then we can see my Databricks workspace, Azure Databricks service created. In the overview, we can see the status as active. We can see the resource group. We can see the location. And we can see the subscription and the ID, including the managed resource group and the Databricks URL. So we want to go ahead and launch the workspace. We are within the Azure Databricks. So we want to go ahead and create our cluster. Now, the cluster is basically a set of computational resources and configuration that we can use to run notebooks and jobs. So on the left-hand panel, I'm going to click on Compute. And then we're going to create all purpose compute. So click on Create Compute. And then I can provide a name for the compute if I choose to, but I can go with this default Abiola Abiola cluster. And then for the policy, I can use the unrestricted, we can use the personal compute and so on. I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to choose a single node. And I'm going to go with this default setting such as the access mode, single user access name, and we can see the performance, which is running on the Databricks runtime version 15.4 LTS. And then we have the use pontoon acceleration and then stick with this standard DFDS V5 as the not type. So this is going to terminate in 120 minutes of inactivity. So I'm going to click on create compute. This took approximately seven minutes for the compute to be ready. So with this green check mark, we can see that the cluster is running. Now we will go ahead and define our storage account information in the Databricks notebook and then write some other code. Now to create notebooks, I'm going to click on this name and then I can click on notebook. I'm going to give this notebook a meaningful name. I'm going to click in this box and control A to select and call it auto loader. And then press enter to commit. So that's how to rename notebook in Databricks. In this block of code, we're going to define the storage account information, such as the storage account name, the container name, and the mount point. Now, the storage account name is basically the name of the Azure storage account where our data is stored. And the container name is the specific container in the Azure storage account that's going to hold our data that we're going to ingest later on. And the mount point is basically the local path in Databricks where we're going to mount or connect to our Azure storage account. And this is going to allow us to interact with the storage account like it's part of the Databricks file system. And then for the MMT, this is a typical base part for the mount. So we want to move to the next part, which is the configuration of the OAuth authentication. So we're going to have this fx.azure.account.auth.site, and it's going to be O authentication. And then for this, it's going to be the provider. And then we're going to provide the client ID, and then we're going to provide the secret ID, and this is going to be the client endpoints and we're going to move to the next part which is going to be mounting the azure storage so we're going to use this dbutils.fx.mount and then we're going to provide the source the mount point extra configs so let's start with this part now to get to the storage account name i'm going to come to this tab and i'm going to double click on this this is the storage account name ctrl c and then come back here and within this angle bracket i'm going to carefully select this part delete and ctrl v and get rid of the space. And then for the name of the container, I'm gonna come back again and then click on containers. And then I'm gonna copy the Databricks container, come back here and within this angle bracket, carefully select and then control V to paste. And then for the mount point, we can provide whatever you like as your mount point name. So I'm gonna select this part. I'm gonna call this on my Databricks. Now you can call it whatever you like. It is up to you. Okay, you don't have to use anything. You can use whatever you like. And then for the configuration, we're going to provide the client ID. To get a client ID, I'm going to come to this tab. Now I don't want to lose this part, so I'm going to just duplicate. So I'm going to click on the overview. And in the overview, we can see the client ID. So I'm going to copy this and come back to the Databricks and carefully select this angle bracket. Delete and Ctrl V. Make sure you paste within the open and close brackets. And then for the secret of the service principle, I'm going to come to this tab and then I can copy this 
secret key, not this secret ID, but this is the key. So copy this and then come back here. And then I'm going to select this angle bracket carefully, delete, Ctrl V to paste. And we don't need to do anything on this part, just leave it as it is. And then we'll come to these DB utils. In this section, we don't need to do anything because we are actually defining the storage account name and we are passing the storage account name here dot data bricks file system dot code dot windows dot net and then we have the name of the container that we have already defined at the top here. and then for the mount points so this is the name of the mount points that we pass in it and then for the extra configs we have the config equals to configs so we don't do anything special and then just go ahead and run this this executed successfully with this check mark we want to go ahead and define our checkpoint path the checkpoint path is where our Spark structure streaming store checkpoint information, which is going to help us to keep track of the progress and state during the stream. Streaming to recover from failure or track changes. So I'm going to create a new cell and paste this code. And I'm going to scroll down. So I just used a variable here called checkpoint path. And then we're going to provide the information such as the name of our mount, and then we're going to provide the location which is going to be coming from our directory so for this path this path i'm going to scroll up carefully and copy the my data bricks ctrl c and scroll down and carefully select this angle bracket to this point and ctrl v and then this is going to be the directory so i'm going to carefully select this path and delete so i'm going to type in transaction because that's going to be the checkpoint part which is going to be coming from the directory of the container of the ADLS gen 2. so i'm going to quickly come here and i'm going to click on databricks container and then i can see we have the um, transaction so copy that and ctrl v so this is what i need as the checkpoint path again we can press enter to run the code so this executed successfully so we want to move to the next one which is to define the schema for this we're going to import some library so from pyspark.sql.types import struct type struct field string type double type and then we have the integer type so this is going to be our schema definition and then for the schema we're going to have the struct type and then within the struct type we're going to have the struct field this is going to essentially point to each of the columns coming from our source data so we can see the order date year month region to sales column and then we have the appropriate data types so this is going to be string type data type and then we have the double and then we have the integer and this is equal to true so I can go on and run this schema definition. This executed successfully. So we want to move to reading the streaming data from the files in our Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 container. I'm going to create a new cell and paste the code. And I'm going to scroll down. And for this, I'm going to create a variable called df equals and in open and close bracket, I'm going to use the spark.read stream. And then for the cloud file, this basically indicates that we're using the Databricks auto loader to undo new data files coming into the new location. And then we have the dot option. So you have the cloud files dot format. So our data is going to be comma separated value. So we're going to have CSV file here. So if you're reading the JSON data, we're going to have JSON. If you're reading the parquet or Avro, you're going to specify that here. And then we're going to also specify the cloud files schema location now the schema location is going to be pointing to the checkpoint we defined at the top in this field this checkpoint underscore path and then we're going to move to the next part which is going to be the option dot error so our files says files contain error so we're going to say error equals to true and then for the schema we're going to infer the schema that we defined in this um, step here let me scroll up uh, this is the schema i'm talking about and finally for now we have the dot load so we're going to point to the mount point and then for slab we're going to point to the transaction again this transaction is the directory within the container of my adls gen 2 okay so whatever you have here here will automatically be the value in this point so i can go on and run this cell this executed successfully i'm going to click on this to expand and then we have the df and then we have the pyspark.sql.dataframe.dataframe and then we have the list of the columns the order dates to the saves including the appropriate data types so we want to go ahead and move to writing streaming data into delta table for that i'm going to create a new cell and i'm going to paste the code so we're going to use the df that we define at the top 
dot right string and then this is going to be the format this is going to be in form of delta table delta format and then we have the option so we're going to provide the checkpoints so this day equal to the checkpoint here and then for the output this is going to append so this simply means that all the files that's going to be coming later on into the read stream will automatically be written based on the existing data and then we have the dot start and then we have the mnt and then we're going to provide again at this point the name of the mount so i'm going to delete and scroll up carefully and copy the my data breaks and i'm going to scroll down and carefully inside the slash control v to paste and then for the directory name where our CSV file are stored i'm going to carefully select this part and then i'm going to call this one transactions all right so this is going to be our write stream now we can control enter the commit okay we can see stream initializing and we have this initialize so we have the last updated record and i can click on this to expand and this is going to give us this amazing view so we're going to see the dashboard we have the input versus processing rate and we have the batch duration so i can even click on the raw data for now we're going to see all this information such as the id run id name timestamp and so on and so forth so in this case we don't have any data in that location so we're going to go ahead and ingest some data right now so i'm going to come back to the container and i want to make sure i'm within this uh transaction directory of the databricks container so i'm going to click on upload and i'm going to browse through the location on my local laptop and this is the file so we have the sales 2015 to 2023 and i'm going to select the tree 2015 to 2017 and then click on open and then i can upload so we have the three files so let's come back to the databricks as soon as we come back here we're going to see this spark jobs so this is going to start moving towards this green icon and they're going to monitor the batch duration and the input versus processing rate there we go so we can see there's a spike that jumps up and then we can see this is um the movement so this tells you that we have some files in that location so this is the current time so i'm recording this video um around past 10 so we can see um 22 06 so we have some data and that's why we have the spike so we can go ahead and query the data i'm going to create a new cell and scroll down ctrl v so we're going to use this spark dot sql and then inside open up those brackets we're going to provide inside double quote select star from delta dot and then we're going to provide the mnt and then we're going to provide the name of this point which is my data breaks and we're going to provide the transactions here so delete and call this one transactions and then we have the dot show method so let's go ahead and run this and see whether it's working or not amazing this worked so we have the order date year month region subcategory product price quantity and sales columns and this is super cool so we can add more data now before we add more data let me quickly perform a select star year so i'm going to do select year column and i want to sum the sales column and i'm going to call this one as total sales and then i can use within this double quote here i'm going to put a space i'm going to use the group by so group by clause i want to group by all whatever we have in the select so when i go ahead and run this let's see the results amazing so we have the total sales for the 2015 2016 and 2017 based on the three files we drop in this location cool now let's see whether the incremental load the auto load that is working whether when we have a new data it's going to be read automatically now before we do that i'm going to come here and i'm going to schedule this note build so i'm going to click on this schedule and then i can provide the description i'm going to call this one incremental data load and then i can provide the information such as the simple or advanced i'm going to use advanced because i want to actually schedule this to run every minute or two minutes so this is going to be every minute not days and then for the minutes i can do minutes and i can click on the show chrome syntax this is going to give me this information i can go back okay so i want to run this uh, let's do every two minutes now i'm going to stick with this default time zone this is my time zone and then it's going to be using the serverless compute and then i can click on create 
So you can say successfully created this incremental data load schedule so we can see here and this looks so awesome so we can add more data i'm going to come to the container here upload more data and click on browse and i want to add the 2018 and 2020 so press enter so we're adding 2018 to 2020 and let's see we're going to have them here they go 18 19 and 20. So let's come here. So I'm going to scroll up quickly so that I can see what is going on. So I'm going to wait here. There's going to be a spike here. So the spike is actually building. So I can see this is actually uh, taking effect. I'm going to just wait for less than two minutes and go ahead and query this data again. So I'm going to scroll down and I can run this cell again. Control enter to run. Amazing. So this worked. So we have the 2018. 2019 and 2020 which is super cool so we want to move to the step number 10 which is to create view in databricks notebook for power bi to connect to the data because we want to actually analyze this data in the power bi i'm going to create a new cell and let me scroll down a little bit and let's paste the code so basically i'm going to use this spark.sql and then we have this um, three double quote and then three double quote so we are creating or replacing the view if it exists i'm going to call this view transactions underscore summary as select star from the delta dot and then we have the my databricks delta transaction so i'm going to press control enter to run so this run successfully so we can go ahead and connect to the view in the power bi desktop i'm going to come to this power bi and i'm going to create a new report and we want to get data from the azure databricks okay so i'm going to click on azure databricks and then click on connect so to connect we're going to provide the server host name and the http path Together, I'm going to come back here and I can return back to the compute. Now, in the compute, I'm going to click on the Abiola Abiola cluster and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I can click the advanced options. I'm going to scroll down and then we have the Spark login innate script and then we have this JavaScript dbc and then we have this open database connectivity so I'm going to click on this jdbc odbc and this is the server host name. I'm going to carefully copy this, go to the Power BI desktop. I'm going to control V to paste and for the HTTP path. And this is what we have at the bottom here. I'm going to scroll down. So copy this. Control C, go to the Power BI and control V to paste. Click OK. And then I'm going to use the Azure Active Directory, the Microsoft Entry ID, my email address. So I'm going to click on Connect. In the navigator, I can see this ABC, which is the server host name. I'm going to go ahead and expand this sales or this My Databricks workspace. And this is where the view is stored. I'm going to expand this default. And there we go. So we can see transactions underscore summary. This is the view that we provided. I'm going to click on this to preview the data. And then you can see the data building up on the right hand side so we're going to go ahead after the data is up to just create a two dimension table from the fact table we're going to load into the power bi desktop and then create one measure and then add more data and see how things build up okay so we have all the columns the other dates year and so on so i'm going to click on transform data and it's going to open the power query of the power bi okay so there we go so i'm going to right click and duplicate this twice so let me duplicate it one more time and let's want to create the region dim table i'm going to call this one dim region and then press enter i'm going to call this one let's want to call this one product so dim product and then press enter to commit and for the dim region i'm going to come to this region column right click remove all the columns and i'm going to right click again and get rid of the duplicate values and then we're going to create the region id index column so i'm going to right click and then remove the duplicate values and then i can sort this ascending order and then i'm going to come to the add column tab i want to create an index column from one and i'm going to name this region id then press enter 
And I'm going to do the same thing for the products. I'm going to come to the product column, right click, remove other columns, right click, remove the duplicates. And we want to sort these from A to Z. And then we want to add an index column from 1 to 10. And then we'll call this one product ID. And then press enter. So we have the two dimension table. This is enough. So we will go ahead and load into the Power BI data model. Okay, so we have the three tables the fact table and the dimension table. I'm going to come to the model view and see the relationship. So we can see we have the fact table and then we have the dim region and then the dim product. Let's quickly write a single measure. We'll calculate the total sales. I'm going to call this one total sales and use the sum function. So we'll sum the sales column, close the bracket, and then press enter. So let's say we want to slice the total sales by product. So I'm going to just drag in here. Okay, so it's going to give us this clustered bar chart. Let's turn it to a table. And let's magnify the numbers. So I'm going to come to the formatting. I will come to the values. And then I want to increase this to, let's say, 20. Okay, so I can close this tab for now. I can close this tab, close. Okay, so the total sales is 280,174. Now, I'm going to quickly get rid of this product. And let's do this by year. I want to focus on the year. So I'm going to drag the year in here. And I'm going to just move the year up a little bit. So we have the total sales for the year 2015 to 2020. Now, don't forget in our source, we loaded 2015 to 2020, which is really important. We want to go ahead and add more data to the ADLS 2 container storage directory. So I'm going to come back here and then I want to click on the upload and then I want to upload the 2020 to 2023. I'm just press enter and then upload. So as soon as I upload, we're going to have the 2021 to 2023 added. I'm going to come to the data breaks and let's go to the recents. In the recent, I can see the auto loader notebook. Open it and then I'm going to scroll down. Now we don't need to do anything because we've already scheduled this job. Okay. So I'm going to click on this to expand. And when I expand, we're going to see we have a spike. So this simply means we, there are some new data that are just coming in. So I can go to the Power BI. In the Power BI, I can just click on the Refresh. And then when I refresh, I'm going to see the record for the 2021, 2022, and 2023. Amazing. So we have the 2021, 2022, 2023 data added, which is super beautiful. Now, when I come back again for the last time, I want to add the other data that is the 2024 to 2025. So I'm going to click on both of them to select, press enter, and then we can upload. So we have the 2024 to 2025 loaded. Now I'm going to come back to data breaks and I can see this icon. So this is telling me that we have the auto loader working again. I can see the spike around this time. This is the time and there we go. So I can go back to the Power BI and refresh. And there we go. So we can see we have the total sales for the 2024 and 2025. So this is how we can essentially implement an incremental data loading, which is known as auto loader in the Azure Databricks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do like, share, comment, and follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.